Hola a todos. Eh, un honor estar aquí con ustedes en el IDB. Truly a pleasure to be here. Thank you for inviting me to share a little bit about uh, me and uh, join in this incredible conversation of demand solutions. So, um, I'm Susan Fonseca. I am a founding member of Singularity and a founder of Women at the Frontier. And I want to share a little bit about how these two initiatives got started and why we decided to leverage these models and, structure, and structures to solve some of the biggest problems of today. Singularity University, what is it? When did it start? It started in 2008. Um, it's the vision of two incredible individuals, Peter Diamandes, founder of XPRIZE Foundation, and Ray Kurzweil, who's considered the genius of our time. Um, I was asked to join by Peter and Ray uh, to help them conceptualize, strategize, and launch this new initiative. And what's great is sometimes you don't know what you don't know, and since I'd never created a university before, I said yes and uh, got myself into it. The ethos of Singularity University, which I think is part of why it's so successful today, is because we really rallied around the concept of a beginner's mindset, of a blank canvas of launching something where we brought our enthusiasm, creativity, diverse experience, passion, interests, uh, to really reinvent or think new something without constraints of why it couldn't be done or, or, or really think within a box. We just put all that away and thought, how can we make this fun and creative and actually create solutions? So the model started with a blank canvas of how Singularity was started. We we're very fortunate that in 2008, we were talking about Singularity, um, and several partners decided to join us in this uh, crazy ride, including Google and Autodesk and others that funded us from the start. We invited 50 of what we consider thought leaders in various areas of exponential technologies uh, from the private, public, government sectors to pitch them this idea at NASA. Uh, Singularity is based in Silicon Valley at NASA in California. And when we presented this idea, several individuals stepped up and said yes. Um, so we were very fortunate about that. A couple of um, decisions that have made Singularity successful today is we decided to focus on human connection, on individuals. If we're trying to solve the biggest problems of our time, it really is about people and the value that people bring to the table. And so we are looking for and looked for when we created our initial team is to focus on individuals that brought a diverse uh, set of backgrounds, ideas, perspectives, social economic uh, thinking, uh, national origin, really a variety of people to come and join uh, to conceptualize this organization. Also people and organizations that were innovative themselves, that were thinking how to do something new, that were taking risks, that were inspiring, and individuals also that were focused on really solving problems and making the world a better place. So we focused on that kind of individual to join the initial team. Key decisions after that included where we launched. Uh, I think most of us here are entrepreneurs, uh, but for us, truly, where we unveiled our program as something new to the world is why Singularity U is so successful today. We had our founding conference fall of 2008. Two months later, in December, we assembled the first board meeting. Two months after that, in February, we were invited to present our initiative at, at TED. And we only had three months after that to assemble the first class that would come and live at NASA. We didn't have students. We didn't have professors. We didn't even have a website. We didn't have a curriculum. We didn't really have the money to bring anybody. But we still decided to go and launch it at TED. Um, so we did. And it has been the most amazing ride since because of this decision and this partner. What does Singularity do? We bring from around the world who we consider are the thought leaders in industries that are accelerating at an incredible pace that are really the groundbreakers in pioneers in science, technology, entrepreneurship. And we bring the future leaders, individuals that we consider will be uh, creating policy, shifting mindsets of their region, to come for one summer to live at NASA and learn 
key foundational topics that relate to artificial intelligence, robotics, nanotech, space exploration, because we're at NASA, uh, human machine uploading, medicine, really disruptive technologies that are at the cutting edge today. We also invite really the thought leaders of the biggest problems of our time, poverty, hunger, we heard of many of those today, health, uh, food, security. And what we do is for the summer, we ask these students to understand what are the biggest problems in the world, how are individuals suffering, truly suffering today, and why, what are the tools that technology can offer to solve problems, and we ask them before they leave, they have to pitch an initiative that would impact one billion people in 10 years. Six years later, it has been incredible to see the team projects that have launched from these summer programs. And the model is really threefold. We are focused on the information of right now to tomorrow. We want people to really understand what are the future trends. We're not going to replace universities and colleges that do such an incredible job of giving you an in-depth understanding of a subject. But we are going to help you understand who are the pioneers of 3D printing of organs, 3D printing of houses, 3D printing of manufacturing in space, right? Who is really assembling the next team of drones? We're really bringing together individuals to understand what's happening now and what are the breakthroughs for tomorrow. We want you to understand what, are, what is suffering happening today and how you can be part of it. And we want you to apply an entrepreneur mindset. We want you to take risks, assemble teams, do design thinking, and really create that company that would impact a billion people. So in the last couple of years, you see the trend from 2008. We started with really a group of like five of us, one summer program, a lot of volunteers, startup mentality. We launched as a nonprofit organization. We've since converted into a benefit corp. And six years later, we have more than 3,000 alumni in 70 countries around the world. More than 300 individuals come and present as mentors um, and inspirational advisors to the community. And I know several of the Singularity U alumni are here, and I'm very, very proud of you. Um, Women at the Frontier started as an initiative because I've been asking myself the same question since I was little, which is, where are the women? And I'm talking about women that are the cultural influencers of our time, that are the pioneers, the inventors, the disruptors, the ones that we all, men and women alike, consider inspirational role models. And I kept asking myself that question, whether I was in policy and government work, or I was in Silicon Valley with startups, or I was with scientific researchers or entrepreneurs or millennials. And I decided to do something about it based on the mission statement and ethos that we developed at Singularity University, which is how can I design a solution to impact a billion people and what is a global grand challenge? And I decided that the global grand challenge I think of today that we need to fix is where are the women? So, we reimagined, again, the same model and concept that we launched in Singularity, which is come to it with a blank canvas, come to it with a beginner's mind. What is the problem? Where are women? Why aren't they showing up in the numbers? And what can we do about it? And for the last couple of years, my team and I, we've been traveling around the world asking that question and trying to understand with a truly open mind, what is the problem? And here at Demand Solutions, that we're looking for solutions for big problems. We first have to understand why is it a problem to begin with. Well, it is a world of 7 billion people, and half of those individuals in the world today are women. Every other person under the sky today is female. But women also represent 70%, 70% of the world's poor. Out of the almost 200 sovereign nations in the world today, only 21 of them are led by a female president or head of state. Women represent only 1, 1% of property owned in the world. 99% of property owned in the world is owned by men. Globally, in Fortune 500 companies, 
they're only 5% of the chief executive officers, the person making the decisions for that company, companies that influence an entire region or the world at times. Only 5% of those CEOs are women. And around 11% of venture capital, seed funding that goes to new startups, and some data is actually showing less than 10%, goes to an, a company that has at least one female founding member. Again, what is the problem? Well, what do your role models today look like? Who are they? When you think of your top innovation disruptors and pioneers, when somebody asks you, who do you want to work for? What company do you want to be like? Who do we think of? And these are great men, and that's why I put them up there. They're great companies, right? Facebook, Google, Apple, amazing. They have done great things for humanity. Where are the women that are like them, that all of us collectively, men and women say, we want to be like them, we want to work for them. We want to be part of their companies. This morning when the IDB conference opened um, with the president of IDB, I thought he made a really great question. He said, in Latin America, where are the science prodigies like our soccer icons? Where is the messy of nanotechnology? Where is the Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk? I'd like to add also to that great question, where's the Frida Kahlo of robotics? Where's the Anusha Ansari in Latin America of space exploration? Where's the Elizabeth Holmes, the youngest self-made billionaire through her new technology, blood testing and healthcare? Where is that female from Latin America? They do exist. So in addition to looking at general trends in, in policy, government, innovation, I also wanted to just look at data to present to you about awards that we give collectively in the world, awards that are prestigious, that are globally recognized, given to the most amazing people, right? One of them being the Nobel Prize Awards, 100 years of awards, over 800 of them have been issued, over 800 of them have been given to a man, 47 to a uh, female. When we look at the um, United Nations General Assembly and who has been the elected president of the UN Assembly, 69 sessions, 66 male chairs of that assembly, only three women. We know that talent is everywhere, but opportunity is not. And women, we are amazing for this economy. We truly are, right? We represent over $20 trillion of consumer spending. We lead decisions over 60% of computer purchases in the world, over 80% of healthcare decisions, over 90% of home purchases. We are an economic power block bigger than China and India combined. I wanted to compare a few of the countries that we visited with Women at the Frontier this past year so that we can, again, collectively see what is the problem. In the United States, over 300 million individuals live here. Half of them are women, not one female president. Only 79 out of the 400 seats in Congress are led by women. And only 5% of CEOs of major companies here are women. Mexico, that we just came back from, again, 100 million people, half of them women, no female president. Peru, 50% women, no female president. Brazil, 200 million people, 50% women. One, which is great, but it's one female president. Only 9% of Congress is female. Globally, senior management. Again, these are people making decisions. These are people that are deciding where resources are given, how teams are assembled, what is the structure of workplace, who to hire, how to hire. Around 24% of senior management in the world is female. And then you can see in Latin America, North America, the numbers are lower. So what is the problem? The problem is that we are half of the world, but not half the conversation. Where are the role models that represent the rest of us, 
the innovation pioneers, the science and tech influencers that all of us can champion, acknowledge, and rally around collectively and celebrate. How do we balance this? I'm really lucky and honored that I had the opportunity to be asked by Ray and Peter to help create Singularity University. Even more so the fact that Ray Kurzweil has also been a champion of my company, Women at the Frontier, and has been a supporter of what we're trying to do here. And it is true, it's about role models. It's about trying to see other individuals that represent your voice, that represent where you come from, mothers, daughters, sisters, wives, but also these are women who are executives, who have led teams, who have resources, who have information to share, to add, before we make the final decisions as a global body. So Women at the Frontier is focused on creating the world's first female game changer index. What is this? This is going to every country in the world to find, fuel, and fund a new ecosystem of innovation that includes women as well as men. We are identifying from every nation in the world the pioneers, the Mary Curies, the Einstein version that is also a woman. Individuals like Hannah Chung, 22 years old, who created a robot teddy bear for children with diabetes. Individuals like Amy Purdy, who lost both of her legs at 19. She's a three-time gold medalist, Paralympic snowboarder. Took the, uh, brought snowboarding to the X Games and now is on tour with Oprah. Individuals like, you know, Mae Jemison, the first woman, African-American woman astronaut. And it goes on and on. Alejandra Mustakis from Chile, who's created the first ideas factory revolutionary ecosystem of innovators, startups, venture capital, all in one. Ana Maikes from Spain. There are so many amazing women that are truly the inventors and pioneers that are creating the future that we should all know who they are. So what we want to do is create a new face of innovation and map the world's game changers. And it's been wonderful to have the support of organizations like Google, Microsoft, Singularity University, NASA, and in 2015, the IDV. <laughs> These are the places that we've been to, and we really uh, look to go to a lot more regions to continue to understand and continue to identify and connect the game changers. Why? Because there are amazing women out there whose passion, talent, energy, inventions, policies, are helping the world make it a better place, but they are like satellites. They're not connected to each other. That network is separated. Individuals like Betty Yang, who we heard today, who is really connecting innovators and venture capital around the world, those are the women that we need. Again, because we're talking about solutions. But in order to get great solutions, you can't solve it with the same mindset that you apply to it over and over again. And one way we can disrupt it is by adding diversity into the conversation. So both with Singularity University and with Women at the Frontier, you know, we really wanted to partner, collaborate, support existing models that were already there, lend, you know, really join in. But we couldn't find them, so we decided to build them. We decided to build the structure, the team, the solution that we wanted to see. Because the frontier truly is about all of us getting there at, in our best self, leveled up to our highest potential, and then working together to solve big problems. I have been um, inspired by this dynamic duo at UNoodle, Torsten and Rebecca. To me, they represent what the frontier is all about, men and women coming together collaboratively in their best, most empowered selves, and jointly creating initiatives that really will help the world. So it's not about displacing these great companies of these great men that have done amazing things for us and that have, you know, our billion dollar industries. It's about adding to these organizations with organizations like Matternet, Drones for Good. One of the founders is a woman from the Dominican Republic 
you, you, most of you probably have heard of 23andMe and Indiegogo, but there are others like it. We talked about Ana Maikis and Star Lab in Spain. So it really is about giving half the sky half of the opportunity to be at the decision-making tables. I really want to thank you all for this opportunity to be here and to share some ideas. I look forward to working with all of you. And I just want to leave you with maybe some words of wisdom from an, an amazing female game changer, astronaut Yvonne Cagle. If we can play the video. I define success two words. One is I've told uh, my students in Singularity that it's not enough just to sustain, but you have to thrive. So when you find yourself engaged, excited, curious, learning, um, entertaining yourself and others, you're thriving. Second part is inspiring. If you find that you can inspire someone else, if you're that source at Nidus, then you're being successful. So when you can take something to the level of inspiring one, and maybe that one is yourself, that may be all it takes to impact one billion people. Gracias.